All right, this video is going to bridge the gap between the third edition of the textbook and the fall 2020 ERP Sim release. There were some changes to OData, which make things a lot easier for students, but then it's difficult for a print textbook to update to the newest version. So this is going to walk you through kind of how to get past those changes. What I recommend for you, regardless of when you're watching this video, if you go back to the ERP Sim Lab website, this is where you would have paid for ERP Sim as a student. Your instructor would have sent you a link and said, hey, go pay for this. Or in one way or another, you signed up for it, you would have received an email for it. Go back to the portals learning portal and then you can follow the scenarios but you're looking for guides and the guides at the bottom it's going to say reference guide and it may look a little different improvise if this has been a while since uh, this video was posted analytics with erp sim for s4 hana and this is always going to be the most up-to-date version and this is telling you about what's in the data so not tool specific it's just kind of an overview and then this is all specific to the tools themselves. And I'm going to show you Excel today. And uh, if you need to look at it, you're welcome to. Just realize that I'm not going to go. They, they go into a, a pivot table after this, after they get the connection made. And I'm going to take you in another direction. And that other direction is starting. It's kind of following the textbook here. There's a reference to the ERP SIM OData template. And I tried to make this easier for everybody uh, by actually adding all the formulas in here. But there's some weird stuff you have to do. Make sure you watch this video all the way to the very end to get all of those details. Uh, there's no skipping around in this one or watch half of it and you're good. So make sure you download this. And as soon as it is downloaded, when you open it, it'll say, you know, you downloaded it from somewhere online and scary, whatever. Enable editing. I promise I don't have any viruses in there. The way that I have this loaded, and if you look at the textbook, it tells you type this in, then type this in, then type this in. I actually included it to make reference to how the new OData is set up. So if you're an instructor, the fourth edition of the textbook will cover this. If you're a student, hey, I made it easier on you. But it's still kind of weird. So I'm going to get to that in a moment. The first thing we're going to do is make the connection, and you'll be able to see what it is that uh, it kind of ends up being weird within this. So this is kind of similar to what you have within the textbook, but it's uh, there are kind of some, some additional steps that are missing. Uh, that are taken out from it. So you will receive a URL from your instructor, and I'll show you where we put, put that in. So there, there was a point in which you had to follow one URL to make a URI builder within the textbook. That doesn't happen anymore. We just go right to it. So you're going to do within the data ribbon, get data from other source, from OData feed, and it's going to pop up and it's going to ask you for the URL, and this is, your instructor will provide this for you. ERP SIM OData URL. This is specific to every single class, so you can't watch any kind of a general thing and just say, oh, it's the same thing for everybody. Your instructor has to give this to you. If you are an instructor watching this, you either have to get it through your UCC, through your product request, or from your UA coordinator. I'm gonna post mine off screen because I don't want anybody copying. Uh, if you're astute, you'll figure out what I what I have here, but I don't want you to say, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> so make sure you're getting this from your instructor. It is called the ERP SIM OData URL. And as soon as I make that initial connection, I'll pop it back here. It'll pop up and it'll say, we couldn't authenticate you with the credentials provided, which were nothing. What you're going to be using here, so click on basic, and then it's username and password. This is your SAP ERP password. If you're using Fiori, if you're using the SAP GUI, whatever you're using, this is how you log on. And I'm using company Z, and I'm using number nine within that. So whatever you use when you logged on, that's what you're using here. And anyone on your team can use their specific to the, um, the company code. And what you want is financial balances. Don't make the mistake of financial... Sorry. <laughs> I just messed up. You want financial postings, not balances. It's They're right next to each other. It's easy to click the wrong one. It does not work. You need to make sure you do financial post. It's funny that I actually made the mistake. That's the mistake you don't want to make. Financial postings. Balances doesn't give you what you're looking for. So once you have that, uh, click on load. And again, I'm using the latest, greatest Excel. I don't know what you have. Um, you have to have a Windows-based machine for this to work, and you need to have a, a, a newer version. 
but it could be configured in a different way. So you might be improvising here. It's outside the scope of the textbook in this video to troubleshoot every single thing you might have. But in one way or another, you want this data. So click on load. Mine is click on load, and it just plops it in right where it needs to go. So financial postings, not financial balances, like I said. <laughs> the nice thing about this, and this is how it's changed from what's in the textbook. Every time you use your company code. So for me, if I keep using the company code Z, every time we have a new company set, it's just going to augment the data. And you can use this in real time. You can set this to refresh, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So just realize this. It's making this connection. It will actually save it within this spreadsheet. So uh, whoever sets this up within your team, you'll always have it saved within here, and then you'll just be able to refresh each time. So this is my data, and you'll see... And click on that. You can see it. I have Z2, Z3, and ZC's worth of data. So it's a set one, set two, set three. And if I pop over here, you can see that I have it all built in. And it's making reference to a worksheet called financial underscore postings. And Excel doesn't know what to do with that quite yet. And I'll show you how we work around it. So you need to have this spelled exactly like this. It is case sensitive. It has to have that underscore in it. If you're concerned about spelling it wrong or it's not quite working, make sure you select financial underscore postings from any of these formulas, copy it, and then right click on the worksheet and rename and paste that. So it has to be capital F, capital P, underscore, no space, financial underscore postings. This is what the rest of the spreadsheet is going to be looking for. And you'll only need to make this update once. Once you refresh in the future, It'll automatically update too. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Excel. And then when we come back over here, what it's going to want here is which company set you have. So company set one, uh, for me, it's just the two letters. And then company set two is letter two, letter three, letter four for each one of the company sets. So for me to see company set ZZ, just type it in there. And, oh, it says value, 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 value. We've got lots of value here. This is all within Excel, and this is kind of a weird thing within it. And, and you'll see here, as soon as I click on this, so you can click F2 or you can click within the box, whichever you do, click within it, don't change anything. Just click Enter. Oh, see, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I'm looking at this thinking, why didn't it work? That's because I used this one, ZZ. I used the intro to manufacturing game. There we go. <sighs> Here I'm making a video. Here I'm uh, seven minutes into a video and it doesn't work. So this one, the value for the bank loan did pop up because I'm in Z2. Z2 is extended manufacturing game, which does have a loan. Intro does not. So all you have to do, and this is kind of weird, but all it does is it tells Excel, this is the formula I want. Go find that worksheet. So all you have to do, do not change a thing. Click within it, click enter. Click within it, click enter. And I'm pressing F2 on my computer. Each one of these, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, if B3 has a value, then go and find, and I want you to sum if the, uh, the it's matching the company code and it's also using the, uh, the GL account number here, which for this one it's bank loan, and it's going to be summing the entire column S. And if that doesn't make sense outside the scope of this video, <laughs> there are gazillions of tutorials out there for Excel. So just check any one of those. But just keep going through any one of these. You have to click into it, click Enter, and then it updates. And all this is doing is telling Excel, go look. Go look over there and uh, find that worksheet. If somebody knows a quicker way of doing this, please post it in the comments. I could not find it. I don't know if I'm not looking for the right thing. But this isn't too bad. It's just a matter of going through, click within it, and click Enter. So it's that easy. This is all you have to do. And if you are in my class and I've assigned you Lab 5, you're done. <laughs> all you have to do is put your company code in uh, for the set that we're using for Lab 5. And the uh, everything updates. This is Lab 5 in my class. This is uh, what you guys are looking for here. This is a jump start for analytics. This is helping you make the connection, and it's a, this one-time connection. And then anything you want to do with it from there, you're welcome to. And this is only using this one data view, the financial postings. But when that popped up, you saw there were a number of different views. Lots of data out there. Make sure you go back and check 
this to see all the different views and what you can do within it. And just to make sure that you know how to update this, so you can click refresh, there's a right click refresh, and then there's also properties. And what you can do, you don't want this to happen when you're just working within Excel because you don't want it refreshing every 60 seconds or every minute. When the game is actually live, if you come in and you say refresh every one minute, every simulated day, so every minute, it's going to go out to the O data, data pull that back, and your uh, um, analytics will update in real time. So you can manually do it, or you can tell it to do it every one minute. I Again, turn that off if you're not actually within a game, because you don't want to wasting resources and slowing things down. So there you go. That is, again, if you're in my class, that's Lab 5. That, this is literally Lab 5. <laughs> uh, go back and kind of look at what each one of these are doing. If you have a question, if you don't understand how this sum if s is working, research it. This one here, I have a max if, so it's uh, dependent on each company code. If you are an instructor, you need to make sure that when you go into zsim underscore start, you have it set so that everyone has access to the OData data sets that you want them to have access to. I have mine set so everyone has access to every company set throughout the entire semester, so every time we're using the client. Uh, check with ERP sim if you don't know how to do that, if you're not sure what's going on with it. Uh, I think that that's it within this. Again, once you make this connection, everything's in place. Uh, it is a little weird. It's outside the scope of this video, outside the scope of the textbook, to be able to do all the different things within Excel or what you might be doing within Tableau, but there are tons of resources out there outside of me. So good luck with it. Have fun with it. Uh, the analytics part, you can get lost, and it's a lot of fun.